Welcome back to Dairy Public Radio. Reporting from the basement of the Dairy Civic Center, this is CM Alexander with the news. Dairy Public Library's annual Dodge Book Tournament has been thrilling the crowd as we enter the competition's second day. We take you live to sports correspondent Dr. John Hellijohn. Thanks, CM. It's been another action-packed day of high-speed paper cuts and spine busters. Sadly, St. Louis' Mark Paynes have been Huckleberry finished in the rematch we've been waiting for all year long. Bonnets off to Massachusetts' own Jane Bostons as they eliminated their rival with pride and prejudice. You're listening to Dairy Public Radio. This is Dairy Public Radio. Welcome back to Dairy Public Radio, a bi-weekly Stephen King Book Club podcast. I'm one of your hosts, C.M. Alexander, alongside Joshua Kahn. Hey, everybody. Benjamin Graham. Hey, constant readers. And today we are back with our second round of March Madness, and Josh is taking us through those brackets. Yeah. All right. We had a very successful round one. I think we had a lot of really good conversation, a lot of interesting matchups that I think are going to make round three very interesting. <laughs> This round, uh, I I think it's fair to say round one had some pretty unfair (laughs) matchups. Round two, I feel like might be a little more difficult. Some of them anyway. (laughs) So I'm going to go over all of the matchups that we are going to discuss in this episode, and then we will we'll just get right to it. Sound good, guys? Yeah. All right. So our first matchup is Shawshank Redemption versus Needful Things. Hmm. Next round, we have Carrie versus Thinner. Then we have Misery versus Dreamcatcher. And 1408 versus It. Mm. Wow. Oh. <laughs> Which It? The miniseries. miniseries. Cool. Yeah. Mm. That. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Let's start with the first matchup in this round, shall we? We have Shawshank versus Needful Things. I feel like we should talk about Needful Things first. I smiled because it's like, oh, yeah, Needful Things. And then I remembered that it was the adaptation. And I was like, oh, yeah, Needful <laughs> Things. Oh, if this was a book discussion, this would be much more difficult. Yes. Ne- oh, I'm trying. Okay, what I remember about Needful Things. Oh, that was horny. It does have a point for horny. Well, do you give it that point? I tacked it on the calculator. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Polly got down with Mr. Gaunt. Oh, Jesus. Is that what Gaunt Likey came from? <laughs> I do believe so. <laughs> I don't know. Wow. Yeah. It gave us Scott Likey. Yeah. I was told by a lot of people how wonderful that adaptation was. And then I watched it and I disagreed (laughs) that it was a wonderful adaptation. I know people really like it, but I feel like they changed some fundamental things that created more of an issue for me in that one. I see. I really I wanted to love Needful Things a lot Mm -hmm. and i cut it a lot of slack because how do you tell that story in a movie it's Mm. it's impossible that has to be either a mini series or a limited run series to get the full scope of that story Mm that's it almost has an unfair disadvantage in that way because no matter how you tell that story you're going to leave out someone's favorite part which is funny because as we talked last episode mini series inherently have an unfair disadvantage Mm -hmm. to movies yeah (laughs) but i don't disagree with you right it's like i said this one is a matter of of scope i think right in order to get the reason that needful things is well one of the reasons needful things is such a terrific book is because of that escalation that's the the dominoes how they fall so cleanly and end with so much destruction and in a movie you just don't have the time for that i would love to be proven wrong I'd love to see someone remake this movie and do it right. It'd be great. This is definitely deserving of a remake. I'm Mm -hmm. so on board for that. I am trying to remember the Needful Things adaptation with all of my power. The only things I can remember, the only thing I can remember is how much I loved the woman that played Nettie Cobb. It's like Mm -hmm. the number one thing that comes to my mind. Good fight scene, too. Yeah. (laughs) That was the thing I thought you were going to say is the the fight scene with her and Wilma in the house while her husband's just outside doing the sheets. They they just like 
brutally fight each other it's... through every room in the house before. Don't they go out the window on the top floor? Yeah, I think Nettie knocks her out the window, and that's when he finally realizes that <laughs> there's a fight wrong. going on. <laughs> oh, God. They, and to its credit, it hit a lot of really good mm-hmm. points, but it was also something about trying to make needful things an isolated standalone movie takes away some of it with like the Ace Merrill aspect of it. Yeah. No one would have thought to include that in the movie because why would you? Why would you assume anybody wants that tie in? And then you'd have to take the time to build his character's right. backstory and everything. Right. Which is why they should remake it now and then Kiefer Sutherland can yeah. play Ace Merrill again. <laughs> and we'll just bring Jerry O'Connell back also just as a, for a cameo. That's fine. And we'll <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like this remake. Yeah. <laughs> The major complaint for the things that I liked what they did with Leland, like the subtlety of changing his hands and and those things that they didn't draw so much attention to. Max Van Sydow is not Leland Gaunt. No, and I do remember also, wait, did we like or not like the the possession effect? We made fun of the electricity effect. Just the, the but I mean, cheesy. did we like it, though? <laughs> Honestly, I don't remember. <laughs> well... Fuck it. We liked hey, it. <laughs> yeah. In in general, just as a rule, I enjoy a cheesy 80s lightning yeah, effect. Yeah. It also had the problem of trying to redeem Buster. They made it like Buster's mm-hmm. for no reason the hero at the end. Uh, I, I don't know. Literally, the my biggest argument is the fact that I seriously do not remember watching this movie. That's an important thing to consider. Yeah. If it did not stick out to you, then... No, yeah. it's yeah. a two hour long wash of beige in my brain. <laughs> See, and that, yeah, if it either has to be so bad that you can't help but remember it. Yeah. Or just good and you remember it. Yeah, Ooh. I remember having a fine time. Okay. That's yeah. what I remember. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Shawshank. Uh, it's Shawshank. It's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. This, is, this is a hard one to talk about because what do you say that people haven't fucking said a thousand times about Shawshank Redemption? It's a great movie. Mm-hmm. When you th- I have no further no, argument. <laughs> uh, when you when you think about that movie, what's the the scene that comes to your mind? Since it's not a wash of beige. Oh, uh, I always the sequence I always remember in Shawshank Redemption is Andy breaking into the warden's office with the record player. Oh, that yeah. sequence of the music starting and just the pan over the guys in the yard's faces as they listen to the opera <laughs> and he kicks back with his feet up on the desk it is so perfect that that's the scene that always comes to comes to mind i always think about the tarring the roof me too the do you mm-hmm. trust her and he like grabs him and holds him over the mm-hmm. side it's so great i forget the actor's name who plays the the guard uh but he's uh, uh yeah who is he oh my god he's just yeah, one of those actors you know who and... just plays a mm-hmm. perfect uh, that guy. guy you hate yeah <laughs> yeah uh, and it's it's just wonderful. Very well acted. Mm-hmm. Well done. It expands on things nicely to make. It's interesting. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I'm going to bring up Dolores Claiborne again. But <laughs> you have two stories where you're. it's one person's account of events that happened. And I feel like Shawshank was a little more kind of by the book on it mm-hmm. than Dolores Claiborne, which is interesting. So it can be done well. Yeah. Having that was I remember having that conversation that when we read the book, I had no idea it was all from Red's recollection. Mm -hmm. And it has I don't know if you guys have seen the clickbait articles that are that basically are like, what is Andy guilty based on because of of the way the story is told uh, because you're only getting it from Red's side. Because Didn't we talk about that in one of the episodes that Red is an unreliable narrator? That he, yeah, that he could be. Possibly. I just remember like, talking about him, putting stuff be, up yeah. his butt. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of keister talk in those episodes. No one has sent Ben $500, in case the listeners are wondering. Waiting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it is It is just a masterpiece of a movie. Even the things they changed that I didn't like. At first, when I was like, oh, I don't like that they changed that, they brought it around, and I was like, all right, that works. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, there's a reason it is always in like the top 10 mm-hmm. lists of like best movies ever made. Yeah. It, it's sure. very good. I think I think we're all going to be on the same page here, but let's go ahead and and cast our votes. Ben, you're up first. Uh Shawshank Redemption to uh, no one's surprise. Yeah, Shawshank for sure. Sam, 
needful thing. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Just to be a contrarian? No, because Shawshank is a good movie. <laughs> but I don't I don't know. I feel like if I rewatched Needful Things, I might get more out of it. Like if I watched it with you guys and we were just sort of having a fun time. That's fair. Because that is also, I think I would get more out of watching just about anything than rewatching Shawshank Redemption. Mm -hmm. Because I've seen it a hundred times. Like all I get out of Shawshank Redemption (laughs) anymore is just a nice warm feeling. I realize, <laughs> I'm not really getting much out of it other than like, hell yeah, Shawshank Redemption is on. I realize what I just did is bonkers because I said that I didn't <laughs> like Needful Things. <laughs> but I, th- I think I could, I think if I watched it again, I might have a different opinion of it because my expectations were so high coming off of the book for what I wanted it to be and what I hoped it would be that now I, I want to watch it again and see what I think, honestly. What's interesting about that is something that I've thought... That Needful Things is in deserving of a remake. We've talked about that because it's just, there are so many better ways to do it now. And that source material is so strong. Whereas I I feel like it's almost impossible to do a bad adaptation out of the material of Shawshank. And then maybe I just feel that way because the adaptation <laughs> we have is so perfect. And mm-hmm. you look at it and you're like, how could anybody make any different choice? But I almost feel like that anybody could have made that movie and it would still be a five out of five. It's, it's not a challenge. A, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it is, but I, I, course, I understand but what you're saying. I it's think, not yeah. the same level of challenge to take <laughs> the novella Shawshank Redemption versus the <laughs> Bible of needful I'm things. Sorry. What an insane <laughs> way to think about uh, scaling movies. <laughs> I, I love it. But that is, imagine going through your life and that's how you like rank how you lo- much you like. I if anybody's pissed off at us <gasps> listening to this, you are right. Yeah. <laughs> you are justified. We're sorry. We've never said this isn't completely arbitrary and nonsensical. I my favorite movie is The Room because <laughs> I mean the script was so bad. Oh my God. The, the level of difficulty of pulling it off, they didn't hit the mark, but the the, the ratio. To be, okay, hold on. For that argument to work, the room would have to be based on a novel that we all think is fucking amazing. <laughs> <laughs> if you show me the novelization of the room and I give it five out of five, I'll side with you. On give this. me six months. <laughs> You can't just print the script and give it to me. That's no. not how that works. All right, so Shawshank moves Shawshank forward. will advance <laughs> next round. Oh, boy. All right, our second matchup for this episode. We have the Sissy Spacek Carrie versus Thinner. Hmm. Sorry, I laughed because <laughs> I... Carrie, classic, mm-hmm. wonderfully directed, very interesting stylistic choices with the split screen shots and then also where you have her just right there in the foreground and sort of everything behind her is kind of blurred but there's some action happening a really cool way to have an intense shot just some stylistic things and i'm like "Mm." when i think about carrie i think of images i don't think about Mm. watching the movie oddly enough yeah interestingly enough we gave these movies the same score. I just wanted to point that out there before we carry on any further. I'm sorry. It was Carrie what was and the, what was the second thinner? one? What was the score? That. Mm. <laughs> We're bad at I think I know why, though, but tell me the score uh, first. Because Josh's girlfriend is in Thinner? And it <laughs> s- skewed our fucking metrics? Well, I, I'm, I think I'm remembering that... There, the character, the guy was goofier and he seemed like more of a, a likable character. They mm. kind of humanized him a Billy. little bit. Billy, thank you. Billy Halleck. Wow, Ben. I know, Congrats. I had to show off. Just... Uh, they were both 13. <laughs> huh. Okay. I think so, still thin- high scored. I Because I think Thinner improved on some things. The adaptation did. No, absolutely. Did. Um, I don't, do you guys have anything like what stands out to you about Carrie before we get into Thinner? I, it's so good good <laughs> sissy spacek mm-hmm. sissy spacek i think in that episode we didn't i i think we pretty well covered 
how fucking alien she looks. Mm. She's yeah. just has the best crazy eyes in, <laughs> she does, in yeah. Hollywood history. <laughs> it, it, she could carry that <laughs> Yeah. That movie by herself and pretty much does. I mean, Everyone else the does mom, a good job. Uh, but the the woman that plays her mom. It's like being in a movie with astounding. Kathy Bates. Even if you're really good, you aren't Kathy Bates. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I remember. I'm trying to remember what it was that I didn't necessarily like about it. Like what what kept me from giving it? A Is it the score? the decade? Because sometimes I feel like I have to readjust how I watch movies for older movies because they are they do take their time more we're used to a lot of fast paced Mm. stuff that for me anyway sometimes I have to go okay this is going to be taking its time to tell me a really good story Mm -hmm. oh this is where it's going to really hurt me to not have re-listened to this episode because I I talk a lot I don't know if you guys have noticed (laughs) uh, about me as a person I like I remember liking the increased brutality of Margaret White's death Mm. Of course. Yeah. I think what keeps me reserved about Carrie is that while I enjoy it, it's a pretty short movie uh, because it's also a pretty short story, mm-hmm. was that what I remember from it are just visuals. I don't remember any feeling, really. Mm-hmm. And so it hasn't... It, I, I would 100% watch it again right now because I find it enjoyable. But I feel like there's some, there's weird carry amnesia that I have. It's weird because really what, I mean, that's what I just said, yeah, but yeah, as yeah, not yeah. a negative necessarily, I see images too. I also don't think of it as moving pictures in my mind like I do most movies. I wish that we'd gotten, I remember wishing we had the more of the town destruction uh, aspects of it because I, I feel like that is such a huge part of what I loved about the book was that the big finale. We wanted it um, to be more like Firestarter. <laughs> well, I, I kind of, I guess, the, as far as the, the ending action. And then because that path of destruction gives us the the death of her mom, it gives us the scene at the Cavalier and Sue Snell having to have Carrie die in her head. Yeah, and not having the white papers and mm-hmm. sort of that broader view of yeah. the world. What I understand why they mm. got rid of that, but I'm I would be interested in a Carrie remake that incorporates that piece of the storytelling. Just just to see what it feels like and what happens. Yeah. Sissy Space Deck still has to be Carrie somehow. <laughs> for sure. Uh but no, yeah. It's it's still a, a slam dunk of a movie, for sure. All right, let's talk about thinner. The- Yeah, the best thing, and I think CM, you said this or alluded to it, that the best thing you can say about this movie is that it does improve on the book a lot. Mm. The book is a Bachman book because it's mean and cruel. The movie is a Stephen King movie. Yeah, which is a massive improvement. So if we're judging this by how well adapted it is, I think it gets a big plus. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. The the thing that puts thinner so high in my mind is actually Janelli because in the book Janelli is definitely a just a hardcore badass but in the movie he's just having the best time (laughs) the the jar of acid that's actually just Pepsi Mm -hmm. scene when he has (laughs) the uh, Gina held hostage it's a phenomenal scene Mm -hmm. I love it and they the makeup effects are pretty fucking rad the the shower scene I <laughs> oh, mean, where he's rubbing the, where's his the, the top of the tummy uh yeah yes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh i don't know i i i have probably since we did that episode have tweeted jordan peel at least once every six months to mm-hmm. ask him if he'll talk to me about making a, a remake as ben pitched directed by jordan peel starring hmm. christian Dude. bale <laughs> I pitched that? Yeah. I'm smart. <laughs> <laughs> because I think that the the downside is that it, it, the the movie is, it loses the message of what the book is really about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think we discussed it in the, that episode too, that it, it loses the, the white man from town stuff. Like when yeah. it happens in the movie, you're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, but goddamn, the makeup. The- Lemke's face. The ball bearing through the hand. The scene that stands out to me is when we see the police officer 
when he goes to his house, Billy goes to his house and we have that reveal of mm. what he looks like. That shit was so gross. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I did a great job. And then we see when we see the judge full uh, as a lizard person in that weird dream <laughs> sequence. Yeah. That we didn't realize was a dream sequence at first. There that were was a couple my times favorite part. Yeah. that I didn't realize this is a dream sequence and I got very confused. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Man, I'm so I'm first yeah. in this round, and I still am not a hundred percent sure because it, it's where I'm at is that Carrie is a rock solid adaptation. Uh, the biggest change. Oh, now I remember the thing that I really hated was the ending mm. uh, because nothing. Uh, the things that I hate the most about that era of horror are jump scare endings and freeze frame endings. <laughs> And endings where someone yells and the camera zooms into their mouth. Mm -hmm. And I think the 70s all movies ended with one of those three things. And it (laughs) drove me insane. So I remember hating the ending of Carrie. But it is a a rock solid straightforward Mm -hmm. adaptation. Whereas Thinner does make improvements and made me enjoy it more. And where I think if I was going to revisit the world of Carrie, I might actually be more interested in reading the book. Whereas if I were revisiting Thinner... I'd probably go yeah. to the movie Thinner. I'm going to go with Thinner. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Interesting. I love that you don't seem like you sound uncertain. I am. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, it, it is. I'm stunned that it's a coin <laughs> toss in my head because when I read this, I was like, oh, this is an easy one. I understand what you're saying, like thinking about rewatching and what I'd have more fun rewatching. I'm going to apply the same logic that I did for the previous bracket, but it's going to land me at a completely different spot, which I'm just going to ruin any authority I have on this podcast at all, which I've done like a thousand times already. And I'm going to vote for the classic Carrie. Good luck, Ben. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's it, it's tough. I, I am surprised that in my head, the argument for Thinner is a good argument. It, it is not often that I, I do believe that the movie is better than the book. But Carrie is a classic. It's, it's, I, I, there, what was the one last episode where it was just, oh, Pet pet Cemetery. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what's, what it's going up against. It's just, oh, that's one of my favorite horror movies removed from the fact, oh, it's also (laughs) happens to be written by one of my, by my favorite (laughs) author, you know? I just, I, Thinner improves upon the source material, but not enough to be better than Carrie. All right, Carrie is advancing. So uh, round three, we will have the Shawshank Redemption versus Carrie. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to rewatch both of those. To- yeah. yeah. All right. This, <laughs> this is an unfair matchup that, Ben, you kind of teased in round one. This matchup is Misery mm-hmm. versus Dreamcatcher. Oh, okay, good. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Do we even have to? <laughs> I feel like I want to talk about Dreamcatcher a little bit because we're not, I presume we're not going to after this round. I would watch it again this week. <laughs> <laughs> Dreamcatcher is just a weird it's, viewing experience. It's so for me. watchable. <laughs> it's, it just makes me confused. Every time I watch it, I'm like, I couldn't, I don't know that I could tell you what the plot of this movie is. I know what it is. And if I really like got down to it, I could, but like, it, it's just, I don't know. It slips out of my brain. <laughs> the, I, I feel like the movie adaptation was written by somebody who was, told what the Tommy knockers was about from another person who read it <laughs> because there is some stuff like the relationship between the four friends, the that scene around the dinner table with the exception of the, you remember the mind palace. Oh yeah. The mind palace. You know about the mind palace, that conversation that yeah. was stupid. Every other interaction where the four of them are together being friends feels awesome. Mm-hmm. All of those actors have straight up, Good chemistry with each other. You said the Tommy Knockers. Did you mean? Oops, to say- damn it! No, it's yeah, actually. Yeah, I had no idea sorry. what you were talking no, about. It's sorry, it's actually kind of. I'm. We should just keep it because it's kind of cool. Because I thought so. The person who made this movie thought they were making a Tommy Knockers. <laughs> That's why all the alien stuff was much more like flushed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. I meant Dreamcatcher. Yeah, because they're in the basics. The elements of the book are there. Duddits isn't an alien. That's weird. 
Owen is a real character who does real things. Yeah, I don't like what they do to him. The the what Dreamcatcher has going for it is those four actors. Really? Yeah. Is there anything else redeeming? <laughs> about, oh, well, um, Morgan Freeman. Yeah. I mean, it does have can't. Morgan Freeman. He's not bad in it, but I mean, the the four friends stand out to me. Sure. Even though we do have that forced <laughs> scene about the mind castle, they have a good relationship with each other on screen. The elements of a good movie are in Dreamcatcher. <laughs> All of the pieces is... are there. <laughs> Sometimes they're like, like, it yeah. has the element, there are scenes, <laughs> there are actors. <laughs> The elements of a good <laughs> movie are there. Sometimes that's enough, weirdly, though. like <laughs> It's like I, that hope for it and what it could have been and what I see them trying to do. Sometimes I dig that in a movie. Well, it's like the 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 big farty scene. <laughs> uh, reading it, we talked about like, God, there's so much farts and it's <laughs> so annoying. But when you see it and when like he goes in the other room and they Beaver giggle. and they like, <laughs> yeah. run outside because they can't stop giggling. All of that is great. It's mm. taking those scenes that seemed weird on paper and making them pretty cool. <laughs> Beaver's death is still insane. Yeah. I don't know why you'd ever reach for a toothpick surrounded by that much blood on the floor. But yeah. there goes your butthole, I guess. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> yep, there goes your butthole. Let's that. talk about Misery. What is there to say about the adaptation of Misery? It's perfect. It's wonderful. It's amazing. <laughs> Kathy Bates is so good and she her performance enhances this character in a way that even though it, it makes her more human than she is in the book and maybe you'd think eh, I don't like that because her otherness is really important to the book it doesn't ruin it somehow it's so good I want to one of you should talk because I don't know how many other ways I can say it's so good <laughs> <laughs> did anyone in Dreamcatcher win an Oscar for their performance <laughs> In Dreamcatcher? In, for In Dreamcatcher. I for did, it. did anyone? I, I don't think The, the think so. guy that did the goofy British accent, did he win Best <laughs> Actor? God damn it. The, for, no. no. Oh, Kathy Bates he's, won Best Actress. He is British, though. Yeah, but it's it's the face. Uh, I love it. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kathy Bates won the fucking Oscar for Best Actress for a horror film. That doesn't happen. No. That's insane, and it is 100% deserved. Like, yeah. her performance as Annie Wilkes is is just perfect. Perfect. The way that this book ties to the movie, as we talked about when we did the movie episode, that he, Paul in the book says, I could never write a book about this because I would exaggerate the details and I would make it more because the book is a more severe Annie. So it it really does stand up to the the movie is how it actually happened. And then the book is Paul's fictionalization of how it happened. I love that because that was your theory, right? Mm, yeah. That that theory came out of this and that it is such a perfect theory. <laughs> and the, I feel like that if that was an accident, it's a glorious accident. Mm, for sure. But the all of the brutality, the way Kathy Bates just f can flip that switch and yeah. for a role where James Conn has to mostly just be in a bed all the time mm -hmm. and that acting could get really repetitive. Mm -hmm. I constantly felt what Paul was feeling. Fucking wonderful movie. All right. I believe it is CM. You have the first misery. Ben. <laughs> yeah. Misery. I Tommy knockers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Misery. Uh, no way. Definitely misery. All right, so Misery will advance, and we're going to see who Misery will face off against in our last matchup for this episode, where we are going to be discussing 1408 versus the original It miniseries. Who wants to start? Pick either one. I'll start with 1408. What a great movie for such a short story. Was that like 20, 30 pages? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really fun. Very rewatchable. I think, Josh, mm -hmm. you were the one who watched it like three times. I watched times. it three times. John Cusack not giving a cell performance, <laughs> giving a John Cusack performance. It, it, it's a fun, it's a fun movie and a really great adaptation. It, it is one of my favorite ghost stories. I, it, I mean, on the podcast, we talked about how much I fucking love that short story. It's amazing. And the fact that they're able to stretch it out and make it feel 
not like they were stretching, you know? It, it It is creepy while still being very popcorn movie fun, mm-hmm. you know? I, I love... I, I'm going to go home and watch Running Man, and <laughs> then I'm going to watch uh, uh, 1408. 1408, the amazing moment when he escapes the room and you spend the next almost 10 minutes thinking, this is a trick. This is, oh, it's still going. Hmm. Oh, more so. He's sending, <laughs> a, oh, I guess he did get it. This is, no, he's back in the room. <laughs> it's just so, it, the, th- that bit goes the perfect length of time. And the effect of him tearing apart the post office to find the room behind it. Oh, so cool. Great. The, just the, yeah, the design of 1408 is so amazing. I, I really, for some reason, just the design of the room of mm-hmm. 1408 makes me really happy because it is, it's so generic. Yeah. It is so nothing that it makes it feel like this is any and every hotel room. It's enough to make you be afraid to go into yeah. a normal hotel room. The I don't remember if we talked about it on the episode of uh, the part that like scared any of us the most. But uh, if, in case I did or or didn't, can I tell you guys the thing that yeah. scared me the yeah. most? The when he he sees a guy across the mm. street from him at one mm. point, yes. and it's just like a dude watching TV, and he's like, "Oh, that's weird." And then later. He's trying to get help and he starts waving at the guy and the guy looks up and he gets up and walks over and then it's him and it starts mirroring. And I was like, this is fuck. It made me so like freak out so hard. I loved it. That stuff in the related to that for me in my head, like the ghost stuff, Mm -hmm. very effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're really the only it's not even a nitpick. It's less than a nitpick because I just wanted it to end with the otherworldly uh, eldritch horror that the short story <laughs> uh, ends with. Mm-hmm. But that's fine. I, <laughs> I can't complain too loud that they just left out one tiny bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about the It miniseries, which should be good because it's been very recently that we covered it. It is Tim Curry. Can't go wrong there. Mm-hmm iconic clown that is probably solely responsible for why most of us are afraid of clowns. (laughs) That opening scene with Georgie, it's just so good. I mean, at the same time, we do have Ben's massage and (laughs) head cradling. (laughs) Yeah, I think the one thing that you can say about the It miniseries is it is absolutely iconic yeah it is tim curry as pennywise is a fucking horror icon Mm -hmm. at this point and there are so many singular moments that are also really the the georgie scene there there are are scenes that have become you know uh classic iconic moments tim curry as pennywise is iconic he is an iconic movie monster but I completely agree that just the format and the era is just never gonna, it, it has not aged well. Mm-hmm. And unless you have the nostalgic rose colored glasses, you know, mm-hmm. they can be hard to watch. That said, I think of all of the TV miniseries, this is hands down the best one, right? I believe so, yeah. I was going to make a joke that Rose read was, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. (laughs) The problem that we run into with miniseries is always that pace because they had to factor in those commercials and things. Mm -hmm. And while I found myself more ready to forgive those faults in it as opposed to some, say, Tommy Knockers, because those moments that they picked for it were still things from the book. (laughs) <laughs> they yeah. were they were told a little strangely in a this is to fill time kind of manner, but they were still something that I recognized. And I don't know, I, I feel like I can I can forgive plenty of the stuff that doesn't work for the sake of nostalgia because it, it is it. And it's it's kind of the same argument I made with Stand By Me. It is so many people's introduction to Stephen King And it stayed with people forever. I feel so biased by the nostalgia because I remember watching this as a kid. Not me. Too scary. (laughs) Too scary. Couldn't even watch Are You Afraid of the Dark? (laughs) I love that. I remember I watched it when it was the, the two VHS tapes that a friend of mine had. 
And yeah, it definitely has stuck with me. It sure doesn't hold up as far in in some of those areas like I th- we discussed that they made Richie basically the main character and they gave Bill a ponytail. And those are <laughs> things I just can't forgive. Uh, they're problems I will take with my me to the grave. Uh, but there, what besides Tim Curry, what really worked for you in regards to it? I think for me, it's the source material. Honestly, I enjoy the story that I know it's telling. And I'm having a hard time separating that and trying to be a, a little more unbiased and figure out how I feel about the miniseries. Ben? Yeah, put on the spot. I'm trying to think of positive things to say about the It miniseries. <laughs> and most of them boil down to it's it. it yeah. It's a story that I love and they do a, <laughs> they do a good enough job. It's fine. <laughs> I was trying to think of things that weren't Pennywise related, Mm. and I was like, oh, I've got it. And then I realized that it's something that directly leads to a Pennywise moment, (laughs) because all of the most important things for the miniseries do. But I I think the, the moment that really always jumps out to me that's not Pennywise related is the, right before they go in, the, the ball bearings. When they're the the uh, you know this one mm-hmm. is for for Mike, this one's for Stan. Yeah. That moment of, of them coming together and how that gives me the same feeling is how much I love the rock fight. Mm-hmm. The rock fight scene in the miniseries is just it's exactly what I wanted it to be. Mm-hmm. All right, I think we're ready. Yeah. to put our votes down. Uh, I'm up first. Thank God, because I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go 1408. Sam, this is really hard. Because I feel like 1408 is actually better. I don't know if this is fair. I can't separate it. I have to go with it. (laughs) Completely fair. Um, (laughs) I feel like had I had the nostalgia of watching it specifically as a child, it would push it over the edge for me. Instead of just having the general nostalgia Mm -hmm. feeling of this is violently 90s. (laughs) Um, But... Since I I don't have that, I have to go with what I feel like is just a sincerely, extremely good movie with 1408. All right, 1408 will advance and it will face off against Misery in the next round. (laughs) All right, let's uh, we're going to wrap things up. And before we do, we'll uh, give a recap of what the matchups that you are going to be hearing in the next episode. So this is where we're going to be at after rounds one and two. So next episode, we will be discussing The Dark Half versus The Running Man, Pet Cemetery versus Christine, Shawshank Redemption versus Carrie, and Misery versus 1408. That is it for this episode of Dairy Public Radio. As always, thank you for listening. Join us for our next episode where we will really sincerely bracket these movies down to the top ones. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> Nailed it. Yes. <laughs> Hey everyone, Sam Alexander here. Thank you for listening to our March Madness Round 2 episode. We hope you enjoyed it. As always, we love to know how you're doing on your brackets, so please share them with us on our social media at Dairy Public Radio. Or you can email us at dairypublicradio at gmail.com. And I do have a bit that did not make the show for you here at the end, so please stay tuned for that. Don't forget to visit our Etsy store for Dairy Public Radio and Stephen King-related merchandise and our Patreon page at patreon.com slash dairypublicradio for bonus content and various rewards. I hope you enjoy this outtake. That's it for this episode. <laughs> Wait. That's the, we're talking about this episode oh now. I just thought you didn't want to discuss it. And so yeah, you were I thought ending you were just like, nope, this one, this is where I okay, draw the line. Here's what actually happened. I was trying desperately to consistently end this episode in a way that made sense, (laughs) unlike all the other times. And I was so focused on, this is what I'm going to say. I didn't, I stopped listening to you. (laughs) So I I didn't realize we were still going. Fantastic. (laughs) That's all for now, listeners. Goodbye.